Looks like the sun's struggling to come out again today. And with that in mind, what was going on today? I guess this was kind of interesting, where apparently there's a platform made by Microsoft to try to train, I guess, drones to fly itself. This one says, Microsoft launches Project AirSim, an end-to-end -end platform to accelerate autonomous flight. Would this theoretically be an instant training since it is, I guess, a machine? It says you don't want to fly drones into wind turbines, power lines, or really anything for that matter. Righty said, coupled with the fact that winter can literally last seven months in North Dakota, we realized we needed something other than the physical world to design our solutions for customers. The answer was Microsoft's Project Air Sim, announced today at the Farnborough International Air Show. Project AirSim is a new platform running on a Microsoft Azure to safely build, train, and test autonomous aircraft through high fidelity simulation. So the argument I would imagine would be normally, if you want drones to fly autonomously, you'd probably have to do everything manually. Maybe, for example, actually fly it through the area, go back with that data, and then tell the thing, well, here's how you should fly, versus this thing, I suppose. If it's doing it all automatically, it'll basically be more efficient per se. It says, in these realistic environments, AI models can run through millions of flights in seconds, learning how to react to countless variables, much like they would in the physical world. How would the vehicle fly in rain, sleet, or snow? How would strong winds or high temperatures affect battery life? Can a drone's camera see a turbine's arms on an overcast day just as well as a clear one? Project AirSim uses the power of Azure to generate massive amounts of data for training AI models on exactly which actions to take at each phase of flight, from takeoff to cruising to landing. It will also offer libraries of simulated 3D environments representing diverse urban and rural landscapes as well as a suite of sophisticated pre-trained AI models to help accelerate autonomy in aerial infrastructure inspection, last mile delivery, and urban air mobility. Are people going to put that in their labels on their autonomous drones now? These ones are, quote, trained to fly around, I don't know, like a city or something like that. And one of the examples I guess they use is this company here that used it for things like wind turbine, I guess, inspections. It says, Air Autonomy, which participated in an early access program for Project AirSim, used it to help customers launch remote inspections of critical infrastructure quickly and safely, without the time, expense, and risk of sending a crew to remote locations and without deep technical backgrounds. We create autonomous capture routines for the frontline worker, people who don't use drones and robots on a regular basis but need them to act like any other tool within their service vehicle. Will this become a thing too? Where eventually if you want to, I don't know, capture even a footage, for example, with a drone, you won't need a quote license, you just dump this stuff up autonomously or will they restrict them in that sense as well? And talk about things such as data. This was kind of interesting where it says in Denmark they banned Chromebooks and stuff. It says Denmark bans Chromebooks and Google Workspace in schools over data transfer risks. That will probably be a lot of users too. It says Denmark is effectively banning Google services in schools after officials in the municipality of Helsingør were last year ordered to carry out a risk assessment around the processing of personal data by Google. In a verdict published last week, Denmark's data protection agency, Data Tilnesnet, revealed that data processing involves students using Google's cloud-based workspace software suite, which includes Gmail, Google Docs, Calendar, and Google Drive, does not meet the requirements of the European Union's GDPR data privacy regulations. Specifically, the authority found that the data processor agreement, or Google's terms and conditions, seemingly allow for data to be transferred to other countries for the purpose of providing support, even though the data is ordinarily stored in one of Google's EU data centers. So again, that's a ton of products and I guess organizations that use that, which kind of relates to the topic yesterday on how it seems like it doesn't matter, I guess, what company or country you're in, everyone kind of does it to a certain extent. So could you ever truly avoid stuff like this in terms of things like data collections or companies determining, oh, they'll use it in this way or that way. Now, the last thing I read was kind of interesting. Anybody want to, I guess, claim $20 for free? I would assume this is virtually everybody in Canada, right? 
It says Sony Pioneer Toshiba among optical disk drive makers settling 29.7 million Canadian class action. Individuals who bought electronics between 2004 and 2010 can claim $20 with no proof of purchase. Again, I would imagine that's virtually everybody because somebody probably made a purchase one way or another during those time frames. Now, whether or not you have the receipt, that's another question because according to this, if you don't have a receipt, then I guess at minimum you get $20. If you do, then you could get more. And it says an optical disk drive or ODD is a memory storage device that reads and or writes data using an optical disk such as CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. ODDs are found within your computers, video game consoles, as well as CD, DVD, and Blu-ray players. Again, this is like almost everything. It says the 29.7 million settlement has been approved by courts in Ontario, BC, and Quebec after a deal was reached between the plaintiffs and BenQ, Hitachi, LG, NEC, Panasonic, Philips, Pioneer, Quanta, Sony, TEAC, and Toshiba, Samsung. The lawsuit alleges that instead of competing, the manufacturers conspired to artificially inflate prices to gouge customers for more money. I wouldn't doubt if that's the case. So essentially it's from this site, according to the article and stuff, it's called oddclassaction.com. And you can, I guess, click there, fill out the form and so forth. And just by reading it, Again, it's $20 if you don't have a receipt and so forth, but if you do, then you submit it and you might get more, but I guess it depends on how many people actually make the claim. Again, I would imagine this is virtually everybody. Would you actually do this? Because I remember that other, I guess, story before where there was the bread price fixing and people could send in their information to get out of those money. A lot of people just didn't bother because they didn't want to release their data. Would you actually do it in this case? See you guys later.